Good afternoon. This is the Oklahoma County Board of Adjustment meeting for June 13th. Mr. Hammond, will you call the roll, please? Members of the Oklahoma County Board of Adjustment is Mr. Bill Hogue. Present. Mr. Jack Query. Present. Ms. Tolly Phillips. Present. We have a quorum. Okay, we have a quorum present. Uh, proper notice of today's meeting has been given as required by statute. The Oklahoma County Board of Adjustment is in session. And the uh, first thing I would like to do is welcome our newest member to the board, Charlie Phillips, and hope you have a long and prosperous uh, career you. with the board. And I think you'll enjoy it, and I think you'll find it most rewarding as well as a great service to the citizens of Oklahoma County. Welcome aboard, Charlie. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of the last uh, meeting, which occurred on April 11th. Has everyone received a copy of the minutes? Are there any corrections to be made to the minutes? I didn't see any. I received a copy, and I make the most approved minutes of April 11, 2017. Second. Okay. Uh, it's been moved and seconded that the minutes uh, be approved as submitted. Mr. Cameron, will you call the roll, please? Uh, Mr. Hogue. Yes. Mr. Query. Yes. Ms. Phillips. Yes. Minutes stand approved as submitted. The next item on the agenda is a discussion and possible action for approval or denial of variance VA-2017-04. The application of Beverly and Ralph Winstead. Is someone present uh, to uh, speak about the application? Uh, Ma'am, <laughs> would one of you come forward and identify yourself for the record and tell the board about your application? I'm Beverly Winstead. I'm the property owner, and we're in the process of getting a building erected. And we're we did not know we were needed a permit because we lived out there for I've been out there 57 years plus. Okay, when you say you're in the process of getting a building erected, what does that mean exactly? How far does does that mean that you're in into the? Uh, We're into the building because we did not know we had to have permits because that changed in '91, which we haven't built anything since before '91, and we had currently had the foundation built, and the steel construct steel beams and cross beams and all that's up. All four walls are up. The insulation has been installed, and all the such as the roof and the, the doors. And that's what we have left to do. I have a letter here. I don't know if I can read my letter. It explains probably. I'm nervous. It explains better what I'm. Sure. Explaining. I have copies of the letter. If you guys would like copies, also. Okay. I mean, it kind of. I, I didn't quite print enough. I mean, I also have pictures of. Okay, you're, you're going to read it. So that's. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Mr. Winstead and I are requesting a variance up to 40 feet to encroach the 100-foot section line road set back to finish construction of a 30-foot by 50-foot outbuilding. We have lived in this location for 32-plus years and have not constructed a building at this address for 28-plus years. Back at that time, building permits were not required out in this rural area for outbuildings, and from our understanding, we thought that this was still the case today. Unbeknownst to us as Oklahoma County residents, we were never notified of any rules or regulation changes that had taken place back in 1991 requiring building permits for living in a rural country. Upon deciding to construct a building, we construct, consulted with Mr. Robert Whitlock of Whitlock Roofing and Construction to guide us for the best location for placement of the outbuilding and to help in the construction of the building. In our decision for placement of the building, we looked at all possibilities and we took into consideration the type of soil and slope of the terrain. Our current property is at 9618 North Dobbs Road and at the top of a hill with surrounding terrain sloping to the south which remains saturated due to wet clay type soil, sloping terrain to the east which remains saturated with water due to water seeping out of the sand rock, and to the north is nothing but a sandy is a hill of light, blowy sand soil where vegetation very rarely grows. 
It therefore, the most logical and feasible location to place the outbuilding is at its current location, which is to the west of the house and carport. The ground is level, has good soil, and sand rock below the surface for a firmer foundation. The soil doesn't remain saturated, and any rain we receive flows downhill from our house and other buildings. As of today, the foundation has been poured, steel beams and steel trusses have been erected, and insulation, steel siding has been placed on all four walls. The only thing lacking is putting on the roof and installing overhead doors to complete the building. If we had known of the rules and regulation changes that occurred back in 91, requiring building permits for any new structures containing a roof, we would have followed the guidelines and obtained a building permit. We ask for your consideration in, in granting the encroachment and issuing a building permit. And I do have photos here of the, the foundation before and during, I mean, photos of everything that we've done so far here. <clears throat> I've, got, kind of, I've got them in order from say you're in the process of building the building, you're quite a ways along. Unfortunately, yes, because we didn't know that. And you're saying the reason why you did not obtain the permit was because you were not aware? That's correct. Of we, it. Haven't, we haven't added any buildings on our property since before 91. Way, but we got married to 82, so it's... Okay. <coughs> uh, can you describe the area around your property? As far as housing, my brother's probably better at describing. I mean, okay. he lives. His property adjoins my property on two sides. Okay. So I'm, I'm a little nervous. Actually, actually, my property adjoins on the south side and east side of their property. And uh, basically, like I said, the hill she lives on is nothing but a just a sugar sand hill from the blow sand on the north side of it. Is there any flooding problems or anything? Oh, like no. On top of where, where the building's located at? No. Well, our, around the building area, I mean. No, actually, uh, there, all I the mean, water runs off, goes to a pond uh, located <laughs> just it's, it's, it's south right. of it. Uh, um, I'm trying to. As far as the area is concerned, are, are your neighbors, are there many homes and Structures uh, around to, around the uh, Actually, this this isn't 9618 Dodge Road. This is uh, Waterloo. Yeah, that's not This is in our property mm -hmm. here. There we go. That's it. Uh, actually, way down in this area is a, a large pond with all the water runs off this way. The nearest neighbor. That was going to be uh, my next question. Uh, have you talked to the neighbors? It sounds like the neighbors are kind of far away, but they're. But we know that. I mean, but, yeah. but have you talked to the neighbors about your. Actually, uh, some of them that live actually a quarter of a mile south have got another way they actually called me because they didn't know who they were and explained the situation. And they said, honestly, we don't care where they're building. Oh. I mean, it's far enough away from them that they didn't really care. I mean, the closest house is the one across the road, and it's uh, that neighbor. I yeah, we talked to him, and he said he does not he have a problem. He said he could even came down here because he didn't okay. have a problem with it. And the neighbor north, which is Mullen Doors and yeah. Sam Kane, Sam they had no problem with yeah. it either. I mean, anybody's property that immediately is probably really didn't have a problem with it. Because everybody's lived out there forever, so everybody's pretty much worked with it. And actually, right over here, there's a. Uh,
Chairman, have there been any protests received? No. None? No. Any inquiries no of any inquiry. kind? Um, do you all have anything else you'd like to submit to the board? I think I could use all the pictures and stuff that I had, and that's pretty much yeah. it. Yeah. Do you have something I'm, I'm, I'm Gary for Felony. I'm sorry, sir. Yeah. I'm, I'm you Gary for Felony. I want you to identify yourself for the record. Thank you very much. Yeah. Is there, is there nothing else you'd like to add? That's pretty much it. Okay. Sure, I have some questions if you don't sure. mind. Sure. You put in here that you consulted with a contractor, a construction, or a thing company? Yes. So when you say that you didn't know anything from 1999, did he not make you aware of that upon from his visit with you, and did you hire him? From what he said, what going to take, I think, 25 feet off of that's, that's what he was, that's what he was saying, 25 feet from the fence line. We're actually 30 feet from the fence line. So he wasn't aware that you need a pull permit? Apparently or not. Is he licensed in as far the as state of Oklahoma? Robert Whitlock Construction, yes. Okay. And if, if you built this structure, then your neighbors want to build a structure, and then the infrastructure starts coming in to Oklahoma County whenever we're all dead and gone, mm -hmm. how how's that road going to be widened? It would never be right into dead ends north of us and dead ends south. Okay, that's okay. It's just a full dead end right. road. Okay, those are my questions. Thank you. One of the important things to always bear in mind is that the zoning rules are not only uh, for someone else's protection, but they're also for your protection, too, in the future if somebody else wants to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, uh, Okay, thank you very much. Then. I do have yeah. one question. Or okay. It's real simple. I mean, do they not know? I mean, I'm just curious. Do they not notify the landowner? Like I said, it changed in '91. How would we have known ahead of time that you know if we would have known that it changed in '91? I mean, because like we don't, we haven't built anything out there since we got a house out there. Well, I haven't built anything since I purchased my house 12 years ago. It's 1982. Okay. But uh, I'm building a building on it right now, okay. and I had to go pull permits okay. and do exactly what you're doing okay. now. And uh, pay a pricey uh, oh, well, fee yeah. to get it assessed. So right. ignorance kind of isn't an argument here. Okay. Whenever you're spending that much mo yeah. your own money, right. well, most contractors, you know, should be pretty. Well, uh, since it's been some time, it been around. Most contractors should be aware of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said he was going to come today, but apparently he's working on a. Did you actually hire him? He yeah. helps us out on it. I hope he helps us out because we're trying to do the work ourselves as much as possible to save on the money part because mm -hmm. it's taken us several years to save up enough money since okay. I retired and we're trying to get stuff situated so he can retire. Okay. Uh, anyone else have any questions? All my questions been answered. Okay. Is there uh, anyone else present that would like to speak on behalf of the application? Is there anyone present that would like to speak on behalf of the application? Is there anyone present that would like to speak against the application? Is there anyone present that would like to speak against the application? Okay, thank you very much, ma'am. Do I get, can I get my picture? <laughs> Hearing none either way, I make a motion we approve the variance BA 2017-04. Okay, I second that motion. Uh, Mr. Gammon, will you call the roll, please? Mr. Ho. Yes. Mr. Query. Yes. Ms. Phillips. No. Okay. Uh, it's been two uh, votes for approval, one vote no. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the application of uh, or variance VA-2017-05, application of Blanford. Is anyone present to speak on behalf of that application? I am Mark Blanford. Would you come forward, sir, identify yourself for the record, and tell the board about your application? Good afternoon. My name is Mark Blanford, and I'm calling... Uh, showed up on behalf to talk about our project. Um, currently, as you can see on the screen, uh, we have a uh, pool uh, that we do have currently a, a permit pulled for. Um, upon that pooling, 
there was, uh, we were made aware of this setback. The interesting part about our project is, is that house was built in 2014. And on my plat, um, this setback is not on the plat, which apparently this was uh, enacted in 20, 2007. So quite honestly, um, now knowing that 25 or 50% of my yard is based on this setback, um, I wouldn't have bought the house. So I guess my question is, is that with a house this new in construction and a plat that's been surveyed, um, why wouldn't that be on my plat? Is it normal for it to be on plats? Every other easement's on my plat. I can show you a copy of it as well. Um, my utility easement's on my plat. My building line easement's on my plat. Drainage easement's on my plat. That is not. It seems like it would should be on the plat. It should be. Yeah. but as a potential buyer of a property that I'm going to be um, made to withstand within that setback requirement, shouldn't I have been made notified? Of, I bought the house in August of this past year, um, and now I've got a project that all I'm looking for is about five feet of 10% of the footprint of the pool based so on the you, setback. You are actually under construction. Yes, sir. Pool? Okay. Yes, sir. And I have the contractor here with me um, in the event we need any questions for him, but I've spent so much time reading through all this information um, and, and understanding what has stopped our project. Um, How did you become aware of that? Uh, we had electrical inspection uh, to come out for um, the grounding wire, um, and then this word setback isn't anywhere in the regulation, so I got confused about that, and I spent quite a bit of time coming down and spending time with your team here trying to get up to par on did this really relate because the confusion came into when you look at my plat, 15 foot utility easement off the rear property line is clear as day and we're like why are we being shut down for this it makes no sense um, and then that's when um, I was shared about the zoning requirement um, and I got to tell you um, I don't I think it's all about interpretation um, I don't really if I read the general description of what I'm being uh, red flagged on. I'm not violating. Everything I'm doing is below grade. And based on this requirement that I was told that we're flagging me for, um, the di this district, it's, it's section 5A, general description, this district provides single family residential housing and royal amenities in the royal development areas of the county. Special attention should be given to overall design and location of lots within the district. And this is key to assure provision of light, air, and open space, and to protect the area from subject to intensified zoning, the district has been established and developed. Again, I'm below grade. I'm only 10% of the pool surface. Five, I don't even need five foot, uh, but we went ahead and asked you guys for five just to be extra safe, um, and I can provide you pictures. I think the drawing that you guys have um, is actually different. I can walk up there and show you on the line. This corner here, this is the only corner that's the issue, right here. Oh, that's your brain, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, basically, you're looking at this piece right here. This piece right here is basically um, not in this zoning. Uh, uh, requirement, but that that bottom corner is. Did your contractor discuss any of that with you? So my contractor, because where I live, um, reached out. To, I'm I'm in Edmond, Oklahoma, um, in Deer Creek School Districts, and apparently in Oklahoma County. So my contractor reached out to the city of Edmond, gave him my address, and they didn't pick up my address. They called City of Oklahoma City to pull my address. It's not part of that. So they felt that it was out of um, a permitted area and they started the project. 
So they tried. They've pulled multiple uh, permits with the county in, the, in their record. They've never had this problem before. And I got to tell you, um, from what this contractor has gone through with me, I, class act all the way. And he's, that's why he's here to support this, this, this ask of the uh, council. Um, but um, the, the, other, the other thing I'll just throw out there, maybe I can get more clarity from the team here, is if I look at um, 5B2C of the zoning uh, regulation that I was required, it says no building shall be closer than 20 feet of any lot line attributing to any residential use. So I got 20 foot there. I got 25 foot on a setback is what we're calling out for an open air, open light, open space requirement. So if you go on the 20 foot rule, I'm not even asking for anything. I shouldn't even be here. Um, if you go on the 25 foot and you think a below grade pool is obstructing open space, then I guess I need five feet from you. And I have pictures I can show you the, the dig. Um, in relation to the yard, we did push the pool way up by the house already. If I have to move that pool. Um, Is there any way that you could have been in compliance had you known in advance? Uh, we would have probably shrinking the footprint of the pool a little bit because what my concern is too is um, I'm a father of four um, and this was the kid's summer project, right? This was going to be their, <laughs> their summer in the pool, but obviously we're staring at a hole that's filling up and, and, and collapsing on itself at this point, waiting for um, hopefully your approval. Um, the only thing we could have done is we could have shape-shifted it maybe a little bit, um, turned it into a lap pool, which isn't really what we were wanting for a family of four, family kind of pool. Um, we could have pushed it even closer to the house, but you can see right now on the, on the drawing you have on the screen, I didn't want my family to walk out the back door and fall into a pool. You know, I wanted to have some buffer zone, be able to put, you know, an, an additional fence up uh, to keep my kids. Um, I got 10, 7, and, and two twins that are six months old. So I wanted to be able to have it far enough away from that, the, the, um, the house but away from that utility easement. I said, I didn't want anything to do with that, and that's why we put it where it did. So when we originally requested the permit, we asked for 20, and you know, we said that it was 20 foot off the fence line. How many foot is it from the exit of your door to get to the book? Um, Approximately. 10, Are you looking at a lot feet? of feet? Or? 10, 15 feet, maybe, Doc, somewhere. I mean, I can show you. Actually, let me give you some pictures. That's right. I was just curious. I was just curious because it looks like it's, I think we it looks have. like it's pretty close to that to the, the exit of your home. Yeah, I can actually give you a if, picture if, here. If I can approach, um, the highlighted line is actually the footprint of the pool to the back of the house, and if you turn the pages. Absolutely none of them have any issue with what we're doing. Um, You've talked to the neighbors and neighbors. Every adjoining, well, I didn't go out to the whole list that we sent mailers out yeah, to. Yeah, but I mean your most, your closest. Two side stuff. neighbors and my rear neighbor, um, and they were all supportive of the project and had no issues with it. Okay. I got a question. South of the pool, is it your prop, big property line of about 321 feet? Oh, there is. is there a fence or something there? Separate you and your neighbor on the south. Uh, are you talking about this bottom line? Yes. Yes, sir. There is a fence that actually goes this this is a farm Maybe. here, um, and they have approximately 50 acres yeah. of this farm yeah. that they have, yeah. and that yeah. that his fence actually is is this a picture of his fence? It looks like the fence line's actually in the middle of that uh, utility easement because it should be 15 feet of utility easement on the south side of that fence. Yeah, I don't know what the easement is on the other side of the fence.
But what is on my plat is everything that you have on this drawing except that setback. So I have that drainage easement, I have the 15 foot. Um, the other interesting thing I'll call out is obviously the intent is open space um, for this zoning requirement. But it does say, interesting enough, that I can, um, I can put steps, unenclosed porches, and in unenclosed balconies may extend into the space. So if I was putting steps in there, I guess I can do it. But if I put a pool that's below grade, that's where the issue is coming up. So I, apparently I can use it for a gazebo. <laughs> Um, but I'm not able to use it for the five feet of the corner of the pool that I need. Uh, and I, the other thing I'd like to add is um, before the project started, um, before we broke ground, um, I reached out to the Homeowners Association. I uh, got approval from the Architectural Committee as well as the Board President, um, and they looked at it for the, my plat. Um, they did it per um, um, the building lines and uh, the quote from Frank McLinden, uh, which is the architecture committee, congratulations on the pool and looks to set outside all easements and building lines per subdivision plat. And please make sure there's a fence enclosure is per specifications. <clears throat> Thank you again for your submittal. So um, you, you do have restrictive covenants. In, in yeah, that's the other kicker. So. <laughs> I've learned more than I should on this, I guess, at this point, but there's nothing in the deed, there's nothing in the covenant that talk about this setback. The board president, uh, Chad Huckerby, didn't know anything about it. Um, so, Are you in compliance with the restrictive covenant? Yes, sir. That's why I have approval from, on May the 4th at 5.02 p.m. Um, from the HOA, uh, approving based on the covenants um, of the HOA. And I can I can bring this forward if you'd like, uh, Mr. Gammon. You would you may want a copy of you you may want a copy of that for the file. Yeah. Do you want? Yeah. Not not the rules, but that letter from the architectural letter. I, you don't need it. Okay. It's yeah. It's an email, and then it's a reply <laughs> state stamp. Um, if you want it for the records, we can do that. No, I I just was wondering about the you. Okay. Not for a permit. Is there anything else uh, that you would like to add, Mr. Blanford? Um, uh, yes, uh, Don Day, uh, who's the owner of the pool contractor, would like to say a word. Okay. Thank you very much for your consideration. Would you identify yourself for the record, sir? My name is Don Day. My wife Amy and I own Thunder Pools. A little bit of our background, we've never had one single complaint in 600 pools in Oklahoma. It's not even record. one. <laughs> we've never been red tagged up till now. We've never had a complaint, never had nothing. And we got started on the project. Of course, we were competitive with other pool companies. We got the project, we were very happy about it. We haven't done a pool in that area, that subdivision ever before. But we reached out to Edmond, because it says City of Edmond. We reached out to Piedmont. We reached out to all the cities about a permit. We called Oklahoma County about a permit, and they said it's not in our jurisdiction, or we would have got a permit. We have never, ever failed to get a permit, ever. So when we got the plot plan, it shows a 15-foot easement. That's all we go by. All the polls we've ever done, we go by the easement lines. If there's some other line on there, and there was none on this one, this is from when they bought the house. You know, they're, they're awarded this little piece of paper saying this is where your property is and the house on it. So what we're at is, we, you know, we're a very good pool company. We think we're the best one in town. We work very hard to be. We've never had a project like this before, ever. And, and it's embarrassing, but... When we when we went to call, I called my electrician. He said, "Well, I'll call the inspection." I said, "There's no permit in this area. Every once in a while, you get these little areas. There's no permits. It's called no man's land." We do a lot of pools on the other side of uh, and Logan County where there's no permits. We do hundreds of them. 
So on this particular deal, we don't feel like we were in violation because when we called in, my, my electrician said, we have to call in for an inspection. I said, there's no inspection. So he said, Don, I think it's in Oklahoma County. I'll call and find out. And he said, Don, it's in Oklahoma County. We already had the pole dug. I mean, we got steel and plumbing in it. We're ready for gunite, which we need to get in as soon as we can because of the range, you know, because it collapses the pools. So he called me back and said, Don, I'm going to go ahead and call an inspection in. I said, well, I think they're going to turn it down because we went down and got a permit and everything right then and there, even though we knew that we didn't know at that time the 25-foot setback, but when we went in to get the permit, they were talking about a 25-foot setback. And we said, here's the plot plan. What are we supposed to do? This is how we build our poles. We've never done it any other way. If it's not on the plot plan, you know, that we get, because we submit this to every city we deal with, and they approve it or disapprove it, but we've never had one disapproved. No, we've never had anything disapproved ever. So we worked very hard to be a very good pool company, and that's what I got to you say. You thought that you had complied with your due diligence. Yes, sir. We do our due diligence very, very much. And if you want to check on us with the Better Business Bureau, we have never had one single complaint ever. It's over 600 pools, and that's quite a record if you really think about it in this state for pool companies. That's a good record. That's all I got to say. Okay. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Blanford, did you say that you had consulted with your neighbors and they have no problem? Yes, I've talked physically face-to-face uh, -face with all of my adjoining neighbors and none of them have any issues. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Gammon, have we, has uh, there been any protest or uh, received or? No protest, no inquiries. Or in? No. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? I'll make a motion to be approved variance VA 2017-05. You second? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that the application VA-2017-05 be approved. Uh, Mr. Gammon, will you call the roll, please? Mr. Hope? Yes. Mr. Query? Yes. Ms. Phelps? Yes. Okay, thank you all very much. All right. Uh, is there any new business? I believe uh, Mr. Gam had something about the 28th. The possibility yeah, we'll, of another. We'd like to have another meeting for about the 29th. 29th. The 29th. 29th of June, if possible. You're talking now the 28th. Is Rather than the 29th? 29th. I said 28th. I meant 29th. 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 Okay. Well, that's what I understood, 29th. Yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Only I hadn't asked Charlie yet. I yeah. Hadn't. Okay. Well, you you let us know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is there anything else that the board needs to consider? Being none, I would move that we adjourn. Second. Mr. Cameron, will you call the roll, please? Mr. Hogue? Yes. Mr. Query? Yes. Ms. Phillips? Yes. The board stands adjourned.